Well, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to this week's Data Talk session. Uh, my name is Daphne van Esteren, and I will be your host today. Um, this is already our sixth Data Talk session, and if you're interested, you can find our previous sessions online on our YouTube channels. Um, during the next half hour, we will talk about AI and journalism. Uh, and I'm delighted to present to you that we have two guests today, um, all the way from Argentina, where it's really early. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we have Matias Felipe de Lima Santos and Florencia Coelho. And I hope I pronounced it correctly. No uh, <laughs> they are both working for La Nación, one of the largest newspapers in Argentina. And early this, this year, uh, they experimented with AI technologies to improve their news reporting. And today they will tell us all about it. Um, but before we dive right in, uh, maybe you can shortly introduce yourself to, to everyone here. Yeah, okay. So, so my name is Matias Felipe. I'm originally from Brazil, but I'm living right now in Spain. I'm a researcher at the University of Navarra under the uh, JOT project that is a Horizon 2020. We are 15 research uh, in different organizations. So we are in universities, in media organizations, news startups, and we are trying to investigate or to research uh, the different aspects that are relate to the future of journalism and combine not only uh, computer science, but also the new technologies that are improving uh, or giving tools to improve the journalism. Uh, especially me, I'm researching about data journalism. So uh, I have colleagues that are researching, uh, for example, collaborative journalism, uh, automated journalism. So yeah, more or less is like that. And this year from January to March, before the pandemic, I was in La Nación uh, because it's part of this project that we spent some time in these organizations. And this year it should be around different organizations but then the pandemic came and then changed a bit uh, so yeah and then i let the floor for florencia but thank you for having us here and it's a pleasure to share our project <laughs> with you great thanks okay uh, i'm flor um, i work at la nacion since 2006 uh, as new media research and trainer um, last year, I spent 10 months at Stanford University with a GSK Fellowship for Journalists researching on AI. Uh, I'm leaving here, then we are going to share the presentation, so you will have links to all the examples provided. So at Stanford, uh, should I start or not? Uh, presentation uh, yeah, yeah sure um you you uh prepare the presentation and I'm yes. on the floor to you guys and then afterwards we i think there should be room for some questions afterwards right okay okay so I, I collected in this presentation examples relating to satellite imagery and the use of some uh, artificial intelligence techniques like I first discovered these two examples at Stanford, uh, how they use machine learning to help environmental monitoring and enforcement, uh, detecting um, farms for swine and poultry. Um, and then another project that was uh, the inspiration for La Nation's project on satellite imagery that it was called Deep Solar Database, where they map every uh, single uh, solar panel in the United States, no, Stanford researchers. And also I was at a conference that is called Women in Data Science, where there was a hackathon and they were inviting a competition to try to detect images with oil palm plantations. No, uh, so um, then I step up on this research from Amnesty International, how they use a machine learning, transfer learning, and crowdsourcing to try to find uh, villages that were destroyed uh, because of civil uh, war um, in Darfur, Sudan. I'm leaving all the links so you can uh, are interested in different of one of these cases. This we love this case, the, uh, this project from Ukraine is called Leprosy of the Land and it, it had won data awards. 
and we met with Mati, one of the main developers, Anatoly, here is his Twitter handle, and there are two links where you can see how they work uh, with two different algorithms to try to detect illegal amber mining. Um, the first link you go to the project itself, and in the second there is a Quartz AI Studio behind the scenes explanation. I also found a project from Reuters Graphics and from AP. Uh, Reuters used a satellite imagery uh, that used like computer vision to try to track the expansion in South China Sea where they are fighting like six countries to, um, they are building like concrete islands, um, like their strategic position no? in, in that um, area. And to the right, there is an example that win the Pulitzer Prize for public service in 2016, and how they have used satellite imagery from Digital Globe to try to find uh, sea vessels that hosted slaves uh, for the fishing industry, no? and how the computer vision of Digital Globe helped them to get sharper images and follow the sea vessels' uh, tracks. And so that's like the inspirations from different newsrooms around the world. And so I think we are okay with time. And Mati, if you want, uh, we can start with Proyecto Naturaleza. It's one of the projects of our data team to try to monitor uh, the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis with data from IPCC, IPBES, and other um, facts. So it's a very dated related project and we decided to to embrace it and okay so when I returned from Stanford and there was the launch of Proyecto Naturaleza, the nature project in Spanish, like trying to do the solar farms or panels, uh, it was one of my returning goals and thanks to Mati and the collaboration of other journalists or students, we could make it happen. Mati, do you want yeah. to jump in? Yeah, so I I went to Argentina in January and then for uh, was like after six months, if I'm not wrong, uh, she was in Stanford studying AI and she was like passionate about that. And then she said to me, oh, look, I saw this project that we are presenting here and I really want to map the solar panels here in Argentina. And then I was, okay, so let's see how we can do that. So I started studying and checking about other, I mean, all these projects that we present and then how they did. And then we faced lots of challenges that we decided to reduce the scope uh, from solar uh, panels to solar farms because uh, there was something that was happening in Argentina that was the government, the previous government, they began uh, a project to bring more so renewable energy to the country. So not only solar, but also wind, power, and even nuclear. And so, yeah. And then we said, okay, let's focus on solar farms and then try to track how is the constructions of them. And then what's this project that she was mentioning about the new editorial brand called uh, Naturaleza, that is a nature in English. So the first step were we are trying to understand better this scope that we had. So we talked with specialists that includes like stakeholders that it was involved in this project people that work in this area of uh, renewable energy. And then we had like one very important day that was like data day that we called, that we brought then to the newsroom and like this different five, four people talking about this project, how they start and the challenge and what are the additions because we had several additions with different parts, try to understand this better for we then uh, design this project. And then we also mentioned, and we're gonna mention about this hackathon that we had to check these data points that we are gonna mention in, our, in the next slide. So, yeah. So the first thing that we need was the satellite imagery, and this is very hard to have access. So the first thing that we discovered that is very expensive 
And for a newsroom, uh, it's really hard to have access. And there is one thing that is very important because we have a couple of uh, satellites that are around our orb orbit. And the spatial resolution plays an important role on that. Because if you wanna map a solar panel, you need really uh, small resolution or high resolution. In this case, that is like 0 0.3 meters. And then you can have more detail, you know. Uh, but in our case, we are checking the options and then we uh, discovered that Europe, uh, using the ESA project, they have like this Sentinel-2. That is, there are two satellites that are running uh, around the orbit and the resolution is not so high, but it's free. And they have a high frequency. That is another important aspect that we need. So then we decide, okay, so as we don't have access to better, uh, but their satellite imagery, we're gonna use this one. And then that's the reason we re reduce our scope to solar panel, but next. But then we realized uh, that we also could have access as to planet that has better uh, resolution, but they don't provide a, uh, a high, how can I say, uh, uh, an extensive a big area. area. Yeah, yes. because what happened is like, it's in the educational and research program. So they have like, if I'm not wrong, 10,000 10, kilometers, square kilometers, if I'm not wrong. And then we decide, okay, so we're gonna use the Copernicus, the satellite from Europe that's Sentinel-2 to analyze and then we use the planet to check if the data is correct. So we combined both satellite images to have uh, a better uh, an analysis from our data. And what else I wanna also add is like the frequency of uh, the Copernicus and the planet are, you know, they run the, the globe like every week. So we have uh, images that you can, you know the update is frequent so you can have for example if you, there is one day that we have clouds so we can get from the next day or even the following week so that's the reason it was good to have this these images why we don't use google because we have a, a serious problem because argentina is a huge country and google they uh if you look the stanford project they use google because the countries that you you know for example us uk and other countries that are play an important role in the world they have uh, the frequency of images is re, uh, it's better than the countries that are not the main ones so that's the reason and not we all the use. areas are covered in google maps yeah exactly so there is so maybe they only go one year or every two years so we couldn't rely on google maps yeah uh, yeah for Next. argentina and then so argentina has 2.5 uh, million if i'm not wrong million square, yeah million uh, square kilometers area is top 10 uh, biggest country in the world so to analyze that we have we collect the images from sentinel 2 and then we divide in tiles of 100 uh, versus 100 pixels. So it was like almost 11 thousand uh, uh, images to train uh, our model. So our model AI model was based on computer vision. So we try to use what we can do with the eyes. So they try to analyze, identify these uh, solar farms. As you can see here in the in the picture, solar farms has really a really a format that's really easy to identify by eye, but for a computer it's very hard because you can easily uh, uh, you know confuse it hard, with a farm. Yeah, yeah you can. Uh, it's hard solar. to distinguish from yeah crop agriculture uh, production. Yeah, so that's the reason we had to use the infrared versions of this image instead of the 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 ones that we can see the rgb that is the red green blue uh, so as i said it was uh the, the why we had to collaborate with other people because it was uh we need an infrastructure that we didn't have in the newsroom 
because we need to use external servers. So we found a startup that could help us with that. So we train like uh, third hours using third GPUs. So they use their uh, infrastructure for us. Uh, and then the algorithm has a, had a precision of 94%. So uh, it was a really good precision. So we could identify what it was a solar farm from was a crop field. Yeah, next. So what we found, uh, when you publish the stories that, uh, that you can see here, part of the story here uh, on the screen, you can see that it was like, uh, we found like 20 solar farms in full operations. And then we found other two private solar farms that it was not, they don't belong to the government. So that was good, that proved that our algorithm was running good. And also we found that they have a big pro, uh, solar farm that they call Kauchari here. And that was in the project of the government. That was the big uh, announcement because it would be the, the biggest, the major solar farm in the region. I mean, the Latin American region. And then we could map that it was uh, basically done, but it was not in full operation. So basically they were delivering what they promised, but we could find that some of were not in operation yet. But it, this is, was because they, the plan uh, that they had was to connect one, uh, for example, one solar farm with a wind farm for the transmission of their energy because it's a huge country. So you need to connect these stations to, to get the energy to the main points. So yeah, next. So once we had like all this, uh, points before we get the final result we had like a hackathon where we could check the points uh, because what happened is we had data from Argentina that the government provides some points that they have solar farms but it was not enough to train our model so what we did was we got data from open um, what's the name for what open open street map uh, open street map because yeah. Chile uh, there weren't enough images of solar farms from Argentina to train the model. So uh, Dimension Labs, our partner in this project, like had the idea to go to Chile, where the region is similar, is um, our neighbor country, and, and they have a good uh, development of solar farms. So they use also images from Chile to, to train the model. Yeah, and then we had this day that we check all the images to classify them as uh, if it was a solar farm or not, because in our model, you need to train with solar farms and things that are not solar farms for the algorithm to understand and try to identify them. And then this was a, ha a half day hackathon that we had in La Nacion, and then we brought the uh, La Nacion data team and the, this startup that's called Dimension and then we check the, the images. And after we process, we got this table that shows uh, most of the solar farms that we identify. And then we compile this data and combine them with the data from the government so we could uh, have the capacity, uh, the right position, uh, check if it was the, the one that we found, for example, the culture that I mentioned was exactly the culture. So when we cross this database, we could identify if it was like delivery. And I think that's it. There is another slide. Yeah, here are yeah. our Twitter yeah. handles. And we are ready for questions if you have one. I think that we have to finish like now. Well, first of all, thanks for all the information. Um, really interesting. Uh, I, I think I first want to give the floor to anyone who has already a question before okay. I dive in. Um, so is there anyone who would like to ask something? No question is stupid. <laughs> no <laughs> like question. these are very difficult uh, concepts. Yeah. And so it took me a year at Stanford to try to understand some of these. So don't oh. feel... We have one question. Don't be shy to ask. Yeah, to ask anything. Well, there's a question in the chat. Um, can, why is a newspaper searching on solar panels or farms? Okay, I can answer that. Um, like, 
When I was at Stanford, I discovered the, the solar panels project. And when I returned to La Nación from this uh, year out, uh, we were just launching the nature project that has to do with a climate crisis and a biodiversity crisis. So renewable energy was a, a topic of main interest for us. So I tried to, to ma make them ends meet and, and work in a project that had some AI and climate change um, focus. So that's why, because we have a strategy that is to work on a nature projects to report on that. And we are part of an alliance that is international covering climate now. There are more than I think 200 new outlets around the world. And it was founded by Columbia Journalism Review from Columbia University in New York and the nation that is a media in the United States. So I think that, and why um, we, we search for these solar farms because the government that was ruling uh, the last five years, uh, for four years, they have signed the Paris Agreement. And so we have commitments of, to develop uh, our energy resources uh, with renewable energies. No? So to try to diminish the oil, gas uh, sources and try to use wind eolic power or solar power. So that's why. Yeah, it was one of the great promises from the previous government. And then they said like this was, they, they used to buy energy from the neighbor countries. So by doing that, they didn't need to buy the, the energy from the neighbor countries. And also they are moving towards this Paris Agreement that they signed. The problem is now with the economic crisis, Worldwide and in Argentina, we are the largest debtor of the monetar international monetary fund. Like yeah. our inflation, I think is the, the third largest of the world. So although we have excellent natural resources for uh, solar energy and wind energy, the problem is who's going to pay the financing of these projects. No, no. so, um, I think that is going to diminish the speed of the adoption of new solar farms creation and connecting the farms through the devices needed to make the energy arrive to other destinations that the provinces where they're actually producing the energy. I don't know if I have been clear with the answer. I think. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds really interesting also to create the awareness that all these solar panels uh, are here. Frauke also has a question, uh, whether you have any ideas for follow-up projects already? For follow-up? Projects, yeah, yeah for next, new, yeah, new other projects. projects. Yes, yeah, so uh, we have experiment and didn't publish uh, during the elections last year using speech to text uh, and no, text mining of tweets and, and Facebook post from candidates, uh, so to try to make um, a word clouds or uh, of topics that they were talking about, but we couldn't get to the deadline. It was like an experiment. Let's hope for the next uh, time we use that, uh, we are um, we can uh make the the deadline no uh, but you have to experiment and try and the next time is going to be better and now we are part of an international collaboration organized by the london school of economics it's called journalism ai a collab we are 20 newsrooms from south china morning post to our, la nacion in argentina and many countries from europe uh, so we are divided in five uh, teams with different challenges, uh, going from a, a fighting a, a bias with AI, like bias in our own reporting, 
uh, two smart tools for newsroom production or how to try to uh, get more subscribers with AI uh, help. And uh, there is a newsletter that you can sign up. And so the, the leaders of this collaboration, one, one name is Mattia Peretti and Charlie Alford Becker, I think, uh, Charlie Becker. Oh, I forgot his first name, but the, the, you can Google Journalism AI Collab and we are going to publish all our research there. So it's difficult. You have to partner like <laughs> with other newsrooms, with startups and hopefully with universities. Because if you make a partnership with a university professor, like when every year he had a new bunch of students, they can uh, still work on a project and maybe the students can publish like Matia. Matia came to La Nación and we work in this project and he published in La Nación being a PhD candidate from the University of Navarra. No? So um, for NGOs, transparency NGOs or activists of certain uh, topics and journalism, it, it's impossible to pay for expensive data scientists, uh, processing uh, power tools. So def definitely collaboration is your word, open collaboration. And I think answer the next question. And I also, I want to add because Lana Sony is very well known because of collaboration, not only with uh, other people, but also with uh, students. They are, uh, every year they have one student for Northwestern University. They have from universities, Argentinian universities. They also know because of their collaboration with the public. They had a lot of cases. They use crowdsourcing to publish stories and volunteering. So they know how to collaborate and they believe on that, right? Or mm -hmm. Yes, we have a journalist from Le Tams in Switzerland, students from Madrid, uh, from the Masters of Data and Visualization, Juan Carre, I think the university is Juan, Juan Carlos. Carlos. Yes, yeah. and um, from Austria also, like we, we host uh, with a, with a um, proper legal contract within our human resources department and a university or a newsroom that uh, a padrinar, I can get the word in, like uh, presents yeah. the candidate to La Nación Data, like so we host up to three months also. Oh, that's, so that's if you're interested, you we can talk. <laughs> uh, but I will need I will need uh, to make the conversation with a with a university or a, a newsroom that wants to make the collaboration. Okay, cool, cool to hear that it's already this this broadly uh, accepted by universities. I had a follow up question where he asked who is financing your current AI project. Uh, or do you finance it all by yourself? So, uh, still we are using our own resources or the resources, for example, for the solar panels of Dimension Labs, the, pro the, the computer computing power, uh, processing Start power yeah. startup. So, there, so it's good to work with universities, right? with universities or startups so you can share the burden of the finance because it, it can be expensive uh, and universities have large processing computers and they have maybe good uh, arrangement with Amazon for hosting uh, um, the information. So, and of course there are grants that you can apply, no? Yeah. So um, Pulitzer Center is at the at United States, it's, um, I have a friend, the executive editor has been a, also part of my JSK fellowship at Stanford, Marina Walker, and they are funding journalism projects, collaboration maybe with, with different newsrooms. And if you say that you want to apply AI to try to, for example, discover the migrations due to climate change or a, uh, different journalism subjects, you can go there. They they can give you up to ten thousand dollars for 
for the project and also Google has funded with the Google News Initiative some projects and uh, the International Center for Journalists and uh, I don't know if the EGC in Europe have some grants also, I think so. Europe. And Probably yes, not. in Europe and uh, for the Pulitzer Center, you can be based international. So the, you don't need to be a US if it's a like a, a public service because yeah. you can they, you could be reporting on Africa, for example. Okay. You no, know? so I think it, it's good that you have an idea, you make the alliances for, uh, with whom you would work, and and you propose to these grants to get the funding. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, I think that answers the question. Uh, I think time-wise, it's best if we move on to our last question, which is from Blanca. Um, she, uh, well, it's an interesting project. Um, and the question is, how could you know whether the solar farms uh, were operational or not? Did you see it on a map or did you use external? Or no, no, one? we use the leather shoe journalism like call, we know, yeah. like with other sources. We couldn't detect that with the, with the eye. No. Yeah, we only could detect if it was constructed. For example, we could detect if it was half of the solar farm done. Uh, but the important thing is that we try to, this collaboration that we had in the first day, the Delta day, that we could have these people that work in the, in the auditions, work in the project. So they could provide some data for us and they could help us to find when it was supposed to operate and the people who was in charge of these, uh, these installations and then check if they were working or not. So yeah, we have a lot of investigative journalism as well, not yeah. only uh, using the technology. Oh, that's cool. Um, I just paid the presentation in the, in the chat. Yeah, I see. So, if you're interested, I put links to all the projects shared in the image. You can click, but I also added the link. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in text, so I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. No, no link. So no, yeah, we yeah, sure. Thanks for sharing uh, the presentation. So for everyone who's interested, and for the people who are listening um, afterwards, so not joining this call, uh, we will share this link with you also, so you can. You can see all the information that was shared and click on all the links. Um, so thank you so much, both of you, for your time and the information you shared with us. Uh, personally, I thought it was really interesting. Um, it was really a topic I would like to know more about. Uh, I will definitely click on the links you shared. Um, I want to thank all the listeners who were in this call and also the, per the people who are listening at home afterwards. Um, this call was recorded and will be online next week on our YouTube channel. Yeah, I really hope to see you next time. So Super. bye everyone. Thank you. <laughs>